like to talk about NAD, um, and particularly, you know, like NAD goes down famously as you get older, um, and people are trying to look for the reason, and, and certainly people such, such as myself, okay, I am um, taking NMN, I'm trying to boost my NAD, I think it's to try and get, and it, I feel much better when I'm taking NMN, so I think it is doing something, um, but I, I know that you were looking at that. So are you um, doing anything to kind of boost your N NAD levels? And can you share that with us? All right, so there's a couple of variables uh, to consider there. Um, one, I'd prefer to see your blood test before and after besides the subjective feel. Let's actually see what it's impacting. That, I think that's an interesting, and actually that could be a, you know, not to suggest video ideas, but that could be a video idea. Here's, you know, you completely stop the NMN, here's my blood test data, right? And then. You, te you, you integrate NMN and you have a few blood tests and you actually show what changes. I think that's an interesting, you know, ex an experiment that you can do on yourself. So um, a, few, a few things to consider with the uh, NAD story. NAD definitely declines during aging. That's indisputable. The question is, how do you maximally impact it? So uh, you probably saw the video I made on it, um, but uh, NR and NMN work in... Um, People who have a, there's a study that showed it worked or a couple studies that showed uh, that NR and NMN supplementation increased NAD in um, people who had a uh, BMI less than 25, so quote unquote normal weight. But then in obese subjects, in two studies in obese subjects, taking NR and NMN did not increase NAD levels. So there's more than just supplementing with NA, uh, NR and NMN as precursor to NAD to actually increasing it, right? So what could possibly impact it? Well, uh, CD38 is a protein whose expression goes up with age that actually has been shown to degrade NAD and also to degrade NR and NMN. So from my perspective, if you're not going after uh, CD38 in that strategy to improve NAD, you may not be getting the maximum benefit or any benefit. So then the question is what increases CD38 during aging? One variable, again, going back to it is microbial burden. So uh, lipopolysaccharide, which is only found in the outer membrane of uh, gram-negative bacteria, so a certain type of bacteria that are found in the body. Um, so these gram-negative bacteria actually increase in our intestines, and um, there's more of uh, the translocation of that metabolite that's found in their uh, outer membrane in the blood during aging. So when you consider that, that would be one potential explanation for why CD CD38 would increase during aging. So if you're going to take NR and NMN, and not consider that you may have suboptimal gut barrier function leading to more of this LPS in your blood, leading to more CD CD38, any NR and NMN that you're taking may be degraded by the CD38. So then the question, taking a further step back is, okay, what can optimize gut barrier function? And this goes into uh, part of the, our major hy hypothesis in my book, dietary fiber, and not just, uh, you know, uh, dietary fiber is not a homogenous thing, it's insoluble and soluble. The insoluble is mainly bulking. You excrete it out. It, increased your, it increases your stool volume, but it's mostly non-fermented by gut bacteria. In contrast, the soluble fiber is fermented by your gut bacteria to make short-chain fatty acids, which improve gut barrier function in addition to other downstream effects, whether it's on muscle, fat, brain, et cetera. So uh, I'd argue that any uh, a strategy for increasing NAD should optimize gut barrier function with the intention of uh, minimizing uh, leakage of LPS into the blood, uh, increasing CD38, which then can degrade NR and NMN. And I actually have a video on, on that. Now, there are other things too that can inhibit CD38 directly. One of those things being apigenin. And I see a lot of people uh, in the anti-aging crowd interested in supplementing with apigenin. So apigenin has some issues about bio bioavailability. Just because you're taking it doesn't mean you're going to absorb all of it. Um, so Again, I prefer to get all of my nutrients from whole food as the lowest risk strategy. Uh, you know, again, polypharmacy, I, I don't know what the long-term effects of supplementing with high doses of apigenin would be, but I know if I take a certain amount of it from parsley, uh, like if I blend a certain amount of fresh parsley in a smoothie, that may or may not be enough to inhibit CD38 and potentially maximize my NAD level. So um, I include uh, fresh parsley in my diet, probably about a 40 grams or so uh, a few times a week. Now you could say, why don't you take more than that? You'll get more apigenin. There's that balance between, I like parsley, but I don't like it so much where I'm gonna bombard it in my diet and then I'm gonna eat it so often that I'm gonna hate it and never include it, right? So um, I try to include some of it. And even, you know, 
extrapolation studies in animal models are interesting, but you know, it's important, you know, it's interesting to say, okay, this much apigenin in, in this study inhibited CD38 and NAD levels increased. But and there are conversion factors to go from mice and rats to humans to potentially suggest how much apigenin to take based on body weight and age and all of these things. But again, that's just a reasonable guess. For you, it may be less. For me, it may be more. There may be other factors influencing. So I'd argue that having some may be better than none because even determining the optimal intake for the individual is going to be a challenge. But again, going back to it, if you've got some biomarkers before and after your given supplement or, or dietary intervention approach, you can see if it's actually working and then further tweak the diet, you know, to, to uh, improve it or not. So, right. Yeah. I mean, if there was a good way to measure NAD levels, that would be, that would be great. But directly, but indirectly, even just looking at whether it's biological age, because, you know, one would predict that you know, if NR and NMN are actually increasing your NAD levels, your cells will be better at energy production. You'll have less systemic oxidative stress, potentially less inflammation. These things would be reflected in a, you know, the biological age test or even the aging.ai data without the uh, inflammation, without the CRP. So some things would change, you know, I, that would be the prediction independent of just looking at a good, you know, NAD. Uh, and even if there was even if you could get your NAD levels measured reliably, you know, you just send your blood off because, you know, it's going to get oxidized. It's, it's difficult to measure it, right? Um, I'd, I'd argue still for those other biomarkers to show that it's actually positively impacting your health rather than the, you know, the, I think it works. So may, you know, it's been shown to work, right? You know, show, let, show me the data. You know, there used to be that, uh, that commercial <laughs> back in the day of the, the lady saying, show me the beef, I'm, show me the data. Right, yes. No, got that. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.